Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. So in France, as part of government efforts to curb environmental degradation and to slow down global cooling, excuse me, I mean global warming, excuse me, I mean climate change, the state imposed an increase to fuel taxes, as in the gasoline for your car or the fuel for heating for your house. How are you during your winter anyhow, France? In the U.S., depending on your locality, gas taxes aren't unheard of. In France, however, and much of the Fourth Reich, excuse me, I mean the European Union, gasoline taxes account for a huge percentage of the overall price of gas. In France's case, about 60% of the cost of fuel is just taxes. As of November 19, 2018, gas prices in France reached 1.48 euros a liter, or roughly $6.32 a gallon. A fuel tax increase was scheduled to take place on January 1st, 2019. For the priesthood of statism in France and their friends in business, academia, and the media, this tax isn't a big deal. A slight increase in costs they can already easily afford. A minor surcharge on their private jets to exclusive get-togethers with fellow rich extravagant celebrities and statist clergy to pat themselves on the back about how environmentally conscious they all are. For people who live paycheck to paycheck, this tax is increasing the cost of getting groceries, the cost of dropping your hatchlings off at government school, or even getting to work. For people already struggling, this latest round of proposed tax hikes prompted people to organize on social media. What was once a series of online petitions became a huge protest movement, boasting hundreds of thousands of people demonstrating all over France, particularly Paris, and setting up roadblocks. The symbol of their movement? The eponymous yellow vest. Now those outside of France might look at that and think, why yellow vests? Well, under French law, all automobiles are required to have yellow vests and reflective triangles as a safety feature. Yeah, I don't understand it either. The point is, they're compelled by government force into having this thing in their property, and the yellow vest protesters have turned something tyrannical into a symbol of freedom. Demonstrators wearing them to their events, coming from all political persuasions, from communists to counter-economists and everything in between, all united to push back against fuel tax increases and that's just the tip of the iceberg. The hundreds of thousands of people who show up to protest are just the ones willing to go out of their way to demonstrate their opposition, and roughly 77% of French polled support the yellow vests. Typically, those who can't protest themselves but want to show solidarity will put the vest on the dashboard of their car, visible through the windshield. Interesting how the yellow vests are as popular as Emmanuel Macaroni is unpopular. Hmm. As for the protests themselves, their strategy is to set up roadblocks around major metropolitan roadways and the countryside, blocking access to roads to effectively shut down France. Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire stated some industries have lost 15 to 50 percent of their revenue from these roadblocks. The strategy? create enough pressure in the economy that the state is forced to give concessions to protesters. Initial demonstrations were met with police presence to keep the peace, but the police took off their helmets in a show of solidarity with the protesters, though later protests would turn violent late November 2018. In Paris, cars have been torched, stores looted, and the Arc de Triomphe, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, was vandalized. On December 8, 2018, 89,000 police officers were deployed to Paris to control any riots, and clashes were inevitable, having been instigated by both police and protesters in separate incidents. Hundreds of injuries are reported, and there are at least eight confirmed fatalities. Police have deployed water cannons and tear gas to disperse the crowds, and there have been at least 400 arrests thus far. Although roadblocks do exist in rural areas, they have largely been left ignored, and most of the drama has taken place in Paris. Inspired by their example, 
the Yellow Vest movement has spread to Belgium, Greece, the Netherlands, and the UK, as well as the US and Canada. Obviously, they aren't protesting Emmanuel Macaroni in Greece. In the UK, the Yellow Vests oppose the Brexit deal UK Prime Minister Theresa May that is a Brexit in name only. In Canada's case, they oppose carbon tax policies supported by Prime Minister Justin Bieber. Belgium has seen significant protesting in the wake of Prime Minister Charles Michel signing Belgium up for the UN Global Migration Compact, which would open Belgium's borders indefinitely. The protesters even managed to drive the Prime Minister into resigning from office. Some Yellow Vesters want the borders shut down to stop the waves of third world migrants into their country. Some want a minimum wage hike, an end to austerity, across the board tax cuts, tax increases for the rich. Their demands are as wide and varied as the individuals who make up the group. Suffice to say, the example of the French people has inspired others across the Western world to express their grievance to the priesthood of statism. So how has the government responded? The Yellow Vest's initial demands were for the repeal of the gas tax hike. After several weeks of trying to stand his ground, in early December, Macaroni caved and offered to suspend the implementation of the tax hike for six months. Yellow Vest protesters did not accept this and redoubled their efforts, calling for a total repeal of the increase, even escalating their rhetoric and demanding that Macaroni must step down from power. Now, the protests in France are a grassroots movement. Though it organized on the internet, it is a decentralized organization with a very loose leadership structure at best. I can scarcely call it an organization. Statist political entities such as Marine Le Pen and her National Rally Party, formerly known as National Front, have attempted to affiliate themselves with the Yellow Vests to no effect. Their core message is opposition to fuel tax hikes and Emmanuel Macron. Other policy positions such as agorism, opposition to migration, or hiking up the minimum wage are simply policy preferences of individual members. Though here's something that's particularly funny. As elitists around the world are competing with each other on who could be the most out of touch with their tax cattle, the French priesthood of statism has started investigating Russia! In connection with the Yellow Vest protests, the probe begins with a report from a group known as the Alliance for Securing Democracy, who claims to have found 600 Twitter accounts, quote, known to promote Kremlin views. Of course, what those pro-Kremlin views are, I don't know, but the source is dubious. The Alliance for Securing Democracy is a unit of the German Marshall Fund, a globalist neocon NGO known for doing exactly what Russia is accused of, namely meddling in foreign nations and foreign elections. Naturally, the French statist priesthood is grabbing onto anything to avoid having to look themselves in the mirror and admit their overreach into the lives of their people has caused all this. As time has gone on, the state's response to the Yellow Vests has become increasingly ruthless. The Church of Statism's hired thugs are already ganging up on and beating people in addition to pelting them with tear gas. Now, it's been confirmed that law enforcement are looking to deploy a mysterious chemical weapon against the protesters. Yes, you heard correctly, a chemical weapon. I couldn't find specifics on what it was, what we do know is that it comes in powder form, can be dispersed from vehicles around an area covering roughly 10 football fields, and has the effects of tear gas, except 200 times stronger. So first, let me explain how tear gas works. Tear gas is an irritant. Truth be told, it isn't even a gas. It's an aerosolized cloud of really tiny particles that bind to soft tissues. It can cause eye and throat irritation. When inhaled, irritation in the airways can cause swelling, especially in the nose, which causes the body's defense mechanisms to go into overdrive, producing mucus as well as tears from the eyes, hence why it's called tear gas. This, combined with difficulty breathing, is intended to induce panic in people and hopefully disperse a crowd. Now, I forgot to mention, it hurts like hell, 
and has been known to permanently injure and even kill. In Egypt, during the Arab Spring, tear gas was linked to 37 deaths. Now, did I mention that tear gas is a nerve agent? So yeah, tear gas is itself a chemical weapon. In fact, it's actually banned from battlefield use under international law. It's so bad that France is not allowed to use it against foreign adversaries, but it's perfectly fine for them in Belgium to use it against their own people. Let's circle back a bit. Tear gas is a nerve agent, simple exposure to which could injure or kill. And the priesthood of statism in France wants to deploy a chemical weapon 200 times stronger against yellow vest protesters. Did you catch that? France wants to deploy chemical weaponry 200 times stronger than tear gas against a civilian population. If we can take away anything from this, at the very least, the extreme response proposed by the government suggests that the movement hasn't been co-opted by state actors in the way Occupy Wall Street or the Tea Party were, so that's good news. And we can prove this through simple logic. If they were co-opted by the state, then the government retaliating against them wouldn't be necessary. Despite all that, the government has demonstrated that it values the lives of its own tax cattle less than they value the implementation of their deindustrialist taxation and economic restrictions. If they aren't skyrocketing the cost of living, they're planning on murdering their own people if they disagree too strongly. All because France wants to stop climate change. In a nutshell, climate change policy can only work one of two ways. Subsidizing so-called green energy, or more environmentally friendly industry, or taxing energy consumption, usually both. In the case of the fuel taxes, it's intended to coerce people into consuming less. Oh hi, fellow cheese-eating surrender monkey, I'm the state, and you're going to lower your carbon footprint whether you want to, or even if you literally can't afford to. And if you disagree, we'll freaking murder you! I've explained in previous videos the dubious science behind climate change alarmism. So the French government has no leg to stand on. No justification for the priesthood of statism and their hired thugs to treat their fellow countrymen who have a shared language, shared culture, worse than they treat ISIS or Al-Qaeda. Through their actions, the state communicates to us how disagreeing with their imperial decrees is even more morally reprehensible than crucifying children. Now that's not to say I'm in complete support of the Yellow Vest protesters. The Yellow Vest protesters call for the resignation of Macron and the repeal of the gas tax hikes, but are deafeningly silent on the state's right to raise taxes, let alone the legitimacy of taxes in the first place. But if there is a positive note to be taken from all this, it's that the multi-decade climate change propaganda campaign that was previously used to justify this rampant deindustrialization is no longer working. The people of France, and increasingly around the Western world, have had to endure stagnant wages. They've seen their spending power, their ability to feed themselves, and provide a good future for their hatchlings, sacrificed on the altar of someone else's evil religion, and they're not taking it anymore. Although they aren't likely to challenge the authority and legitimacy of the institutions that steal from them, restricts their economic activity, and throws them into a cage, and will gas them to death that they resist, it's better than nothing, I guess. If France goes through with deploying this chemical superweapon, if they cross that Rubicon, they have little to lose internationally. They might receive some stern lectures or finger-wagging from the international community. Maybe the UN will levy fines against the French government to be paid to the EU by French tax cattle. But everyone who's in power will stay in power. The police will keep their jobs, and nothing will come of the outraged theater you'll almost certainly hear on mainstream media. For the hundreds of thousands of people who will be affected by any future chemical weapons attacks brought upon them by their own governments, they'll learn the hard way. The state is an enemy of life itself. Either way, the yellow vests aren't stopping. 
at least not right away, and any future assaults against them by their government will only galvanize them further. While the Yellow Vests did manage to get a Prime Minister to resign in Belgium, whether anything of actual consequence changes, we'll have to wait and see. Questions? Comments? Critique? Do you support the Yellow Vests? Do you think France will deploy their chemical superweapon? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.